I'll never forget it. And this is all in broad Yorkshire, so I hope you can all understand it. I'll never forget it. Day before wedding. Me and my father had just worked a 24 hour shift down pit. And we come up and it was snowing like hell. And he said, Never mind, lad. We've only nine miles to go. And when we get home, your mother will have made us a nice tea. So I looked down at my toe sticking out my boots and I thought, well, I'm not going to enjoy this. And he rode. We set off, and about four hours later, we managed to see a single gas light shining in our village. My father looked down at me through icicles hanging off his nose. And he said, nearly young now, lad, and we should be having that nice tea. We eventually got to the house door, shook snow off us as best we could, and there was my great old mother, shook by the meagre fire. She said, Could you two snowmen? But never mind, I've got some nice brown bread and butter for your tea. Hey, my father was crackers. He reached out and gently grabbed my mother by the throat. <laughs> he said gently to her, You're spawning out of the face, Malik. <laughs> In a way, it was to be father. He said, you'll be making a big girl all afternoon. He said, he'd get us a proper snap for me in this land. <laughs> when he threw it out, so he said, he said, put his hand in his pocket, he said, took out six months, and he said, get down your young fish hole. Get two large garlic, two large portion of chips, some mushy peas, go next door and get a large loaf, and half a pound of butter, and don't forget the change. Things were different in those days. <laughs> anyway, when we done our snap, my father, as usual, took his boots off, put his feet upon the path, and shouted down to my mother. He said, you can come up now, mother, and bring a bucket to call up with this fire's going out. <laughs> then he said to me, your mother tells me you're getting wet tomorrow, lad. I said, yeah, yes, that's right. He says, well, you've got two things to do. Oh, I said, what's that? He says, well, tomorrow night, you're going to go to bed and sleep with a woman for the first time. And she'll expect you to perform. <laughs> I said, oh. He said, do you know what to do? So I thought of it, and I thought of it, and I thought, I don't know. I'm singing a nice song. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put ceiling. <laughs> so I said, what, what's the next thing I've got to do, Father? He said, spoke to his pipe. He said, you've got to let that woman know who's going to make master in your house as soon as possible. He said, best time is right after Big Doom. I said, oh, well, all right then. So with a lovely wedding, as you've seen, St. Bartholomew's Church, and the reception was at the Conservative Club. Oh, well, man. I went a slice of ham and half a tomato. <laughs> I went pinches for afters. And Dorothy's mother had bought six tins of carnation cream and we passed it round and put it on as pinches. Oh, the punch. Oh, the punch. Oh, the punch. And he wrote it. I saw Dorothy standing talking to, talking to her mother. I thought, I'll do it now. Strike what my hands up. So I went to her. Hello, woman. Hello, woman. Funny woman, Dorothy's mother. <laughs> First off, she wanted Dorothy to marry a vicar. <laughs> and when I come, she brought me home and my brown brace and ribs and my wellingtons, and I'd still be with all in the front. She, she didn't write take kindly to me at all. In fact, I heard her say one day, can't you do any better than that? <laughs> so anyway, I was there. So I said, I've come to talk to you about who's going to be master in our house. <laughs> Dorothy looked at her mother. <laughs> her mother looked at Dorothy. 
And then Dorothy started to stand up, slowly like, pulling herself to a full length, all in a wedding dress, all in white. She pulled herself up, home to perfection with the body. Straightened up, she got angles on then, she would have been taller. Both of them stuck out like two headlamps wrong row down. <laughs> and I stood back and thought, oh, God, you've shot double six of you. I thought, she, she reminded me of one of them statues that brought Michael Angel who was to make him run. And I thought, it's lovely. And he wrote, she gently put me to water with me time. <laughs> and she uh, I thought she was going to give one of them lip crunchy kisses. But she whispered in me ear, she said, there'll be no master in our house. We'll do it together. Do you follow? I said, ah, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so there it is. I've talked mine 60 years. And we still shipped through some heavy waters. And we're here today to tell it in. And by gum, I love her just as much now as I did then. <laughs> Thank you very much.